Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue our discussion on wireless connectivity. Today, I'm going to focus on Bluetooth. Okay, so this will be the part one series. Look up for my part two series discussion on Bluetooth. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's video, please send me an email. Firstly, let's define what is Bluetooth. Okay, Bluetooth is a wireless technology standard for exchanging data over short distance building a personal area network, okay, which allows electronic device to connect and interact with each other. Okay, so this is a very simple definition of Bluetooth. Bluetooth can be found in a number of gadgets from smartphone, loudspeaker to laptop, and many, many more. By using Bluetooth connection, okay, we can actually do without messy cabling. Okay, so this is the motivation of Bluetooth. By having a form of wireless connectivity, we don't need cable to connect one device to another device. So in fact, Bluetooth is one of the earliest pioneer commercial wireless connectivity for device. Hence, it's always good to study this pioneer wireless technology. This slide here shows the application of Bluetooth. I don't believe that you have not used any of them. So therefore, I would want to skip this slide. Okay, so as I mentioned, okay, you guys are using this application in a daily basis. So I like to skip this application of Bluetooth. This slide here shows the Bluetooth group map. Okay, Bluetooth started up in 1999 okay, by Sony Ericsson. They built the first hand-free set for mobile. Okay, I believe this version one probably you cannot buy in current world. They are all in the museum now. So next, Bluetooth went to version 2 and 3. The motivation of Bluetooth 2 and 3 is how to increase the data rate. In okay, version 1, the data rate is only good enough to carry voice. Definitely not good enough for music. Version 2 increase the data rate and hence is good enough to carry out music. So this is the version, version 2, that start off by having a so-called a wireless headset to carry out music. Version 3 again focus on carry more data. Version 4 and 5, the design rule change completely. Version 4 focus on low power. Of course, the data rate also increased, but the key criteria for coming up version 4 is how to reduce the power. Version 5 support mesh network. Okay, so currently, we are still at version 5. Okay, so this diagram shows a quick comprehensive Bluetooth roadmap from version 1 all the way to version 5. Like what I mentioned, version 1 don't really exist. 2 and 3 focus on increasing the data rate. Version 4 and 5 focus on low power. Okay, so this is what I mentioned. Since version 1 don't really exist anymore, okay, so I will not discuss on version 1. So version 2 okay, is the start of the era of wireless headset, wireless speaker, and in-car audio. Okay, mainly it's still so-called one is to one point-to-point -point communication. Version 3 also still focusing on point-to-point -point version. Okay, they increase the amount of data to carry. And it basically also the start of data transfer. Okay, so the sport and fitness device, wearable that we that we want to monitor our health, for example, okay, they are all in version 3 of Bluetooth. Okay, version 4 okay, is the era of beacon. Instead of one-to-one, -one, version 4 is one-to-many. Okay, so this is the start evolution of low power also. Version 4 also, how we can reduce the power drastically. Version 5 okay, is a mesh network. Okay, so it's many talk to many. Okay, so basically this is to build out a mesh network, something very similar with Zigbee. So what is a Bluetooth network? architecture okay so this diagram here shows the bluetooth network architecture 
Okay, when two or more Bluetooth unit share a channel, they form a Pico net. So this dash line can okay, indicate this is a Pico net. Okay, any device inside here can be a master or slave. Okay, master is the device that initiate the formation of a Pico net. Okay, so inside a Pico net, there can only be one master and maximum seven slaves here. Each Pico net is defined by a different hopping channel okay, to which user synchronize to. Okay, so this is actually uh, the pre hopping pattern is actually determined when they actually do a pairing. Okay. Initially, when they actually start to join the to form a Pico net, they actually need to do a pairing. So by doing a pairing, they actually also agree upon on the hopping pattern. Okay, this how this exactly work. Okay, I will explain on the part B series of the Bluetooth. Okay, a scatter net basically consists of overlapping Pico net. So you can see this is a one Pico net. Okay, this is another Pico net. Okay, so there's one device that is overlapping Pico net one and Pico net. Two. Okay, so when two Pico net form together, okay, we call it a scatter net. Okay, for Bluetooth device, the range vary. Okay, it actually depends on the classes of radio that we want to use. Okay, there are many three class: class three, class two, and class one. Okay, class three has the least in terms of the range. Okay, the range is only up to one meter. Okay, class 2 okay, is one of the most common found Bluetooth. Okay, in fact, most of our audio are all under this class 2 radio. Okay, so the effective range is around 10 meter. Class 1 is mainly for industry use. Okay, they can serve a longer range, about 100 meter. Okay, how can Bluetooth vary the range? It's basically, they actually vary the power. Okay, so since class 3 has the least range, so from here you can see that they actually emit up the least power. Followed by class 2 and class 1 need to cover a range of 100 meter. So the emit power is 100 mini one. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my video. Okay, please like and subscribe. Thank you.